Nicola Sturgeon is Scotland's first female First Minister. She's the first female leader of the Scottish National Party and with the SNP tipped to play the role of kingmaker in the general elections in May. She's already been described as the most powerful woman in British politics. We have been inundated with emailed questions, videoed questions, Twitter questions for you. So thank you very much for agreeing. You're welcome. I'm to answer some. looking forward to it, <laughs> Good. I think. Uh, first up is a question from comedian Rona Cameron. You're from a grassroots political background and you're a Scottish working class woman, so I salute you. Um, this is a quote from you. We will never, ever put the Tories into government. You do not have to vote Labour to keep the Tories out of Westminster. That is what we will do. How will you get the Tories out of Westminster? Thanks. Well, if, as has happened in the past, enough people in England vote Tory to give the Tories a majority, then you know, we find it doesn't matter how Scotland votes. And in those circumstances, what really matters is that Scotland is protected with SNP MPs. Mm. But in the context of, of a hung parliament where neither the Tories or Labour have an overall majority, what I have clearly said is that SNP MPs will never help David Cameron put a majority together, either through a formal coalition or any kind of informal arrangement. OK, but at the same time, uh, much of the SNP campaign has been built on undermining Labour. In so undermining Labour, you've also effectively dismantled the British left and any hope of an effective left-wing government. People look at Labour and they don't see that it offers much of a progressive alternative. You know, just a few weeks ago, Labour had joined the Tories and the voting lobbies and the Commons to vote for another £30 billion of austerity cuts. Now, the job of the SNP in Westminster, if people vote for us, to mm. put us there in numbers, is firstly to stand up for Scottish interests and push the issues that matter to people in Scotland onto and up the Westminster agenda. As long as we're part of the Westminster system, as well as standing up for Scotland, mm. I would hope we could make common cause with parties like Ply Cymru in Wales, mm. the Green Party in England. At the expense England, of an effective Labour government? And perhaps, well, you see, I, I think that might make a Labour government a more effective government and a government that actually delivers some of the policies that Labour supporters probably are crying out to hear a Labour leader argue for. If the polls are right, we could have the third biggest party in the UK, a party that only Scottish people could vote for. Yeah, but, you know, if you turn it back, and I, I hope we'd be, notwithstanding what we believe on in Scottish independence, if we're part of the Westminster system, I hope we'll try and play a constructive part in that. Mm. But remember, if, if you're in Scotland, for more than half of my lifetime, we've had to put up with Tory governments that we didn't vote for. Um, now and we're going to get an SNP when well, we haven't. <laughs> well, and, well, you know, but during the referendum campaign, politicians from Westminster came to Scotland repeatedly to say, Scotland, don't leave us because you're a valued part of the UK. And now when we say, well, we want to make our voice heard in the UK, you get some Westminster politicians saying, that's not on. With that in mind, I have another question for you now with The Guardian's defence correspondent, Ewan McCaskill. I would like to ask if you will rule out uh, the possibility of another independence referendum uh, within the next five years. Um, I, I'm not ruling it in and I'm, I'm not going to rule it out either because, you know, one of the things about the referendum campaign and the wonderful experience that the referendum campaign was is that, you know, the Scottish people very firmly were in charge of the future of, of Scotland. And mm. if there is to be another referendum and if there is, what the outcome of that referendum is going to be will not be decided by me. That will be decided by majority Scottish public opinion. Mm. I can't impose a referendum on Scotland. So for there to be another referendum, you know, I, as leader of the SNP, would have to fight an election with that in our manifesto, a Scottish Parliament election with that in our manifesto, and enough Which people would year. have to vote mm. for that to give us a majority in the Scottish Parliament that would enable us to get the legislation through. So I can't impose it on people, but equally it would be completely wrong for me to say to Scotland, you know, no matter the opinion of the Scottish people, no matter the circumstances that might develop over the next few years, I'm ruling out having a referendum. It's not, it's not in my gift to do that. But you have said you do want an independent Scotland under your leadership. So it's gone sort of from being... Sure I've, wanting to, I've, I've said I'd love it to be under my leadership. I've, you know, what a lifelong SNP member who is now in the privileged position of leading her party and has campaigned for independence for her entire adult life would say anything other than, of course, I'd love to think it would be under my leadership. But, you know, can I guarantee that? Of course I can't. You know, if you have a 
Tory government at Westminster that takes us out of Europe against our will after an in-out referendum, then I guess people in Scotland might think, you know what, we might be better off independent. Well, it's interesting you should bring that possibility up of a Tory government that would want to have a referendum on Europe. We have a question here who's been emailed in from Fraser Nelson, um, editor of The Spectator. I know Fraser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agree or disagree? There is no way you would go into a coalition with Miliband because the SNP needs Tories in government to pursue its real goal, independence. Uh, I disagree. Uh, not for the first time with uh, the wonderful Fraser Nelson. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't want a Tory government. Tories are bad for Scotland. That's been proved time and again since the days of Margaret Thatcher when I was growing up in the west of Scotland. I don't want a Tory government. I do want Scotland to be independent, but I want to persuade a majority of people in Scotland to be independent for the right reasons, for the positive reasons that we'd be better off socially, economically, by being an independent country. You joined the SNP when you were 16 years old. That's when you a were whole still five school. years ago now, right, actually. I know, yeah, I know. Time has flown by. Six, no? We've got a couple of questions from sixth form students at that school, the Greenwood oh, wow. Academy. <laughs> What is your favourite TV soap and what character are you most like? Oh my goodness. Um, which character am I most like? My favourite character in River City, I'll settle for that, is uh, Scarlet. And what you, you is, why do you like watch. Scarlet? Because she's really gallus and do you know what that means? That's a no. Scottish expression for, you know, uh, somebody who's really uh, kind of stands up and makes their, their views known. The second question is from Cheryl Dempster. If we'd known nuclear weapons, what would you do with the money we saved? Oh, brilliant question. Absolutely yeah. brilliant question. If we had, well, you know, if, if we didn't renew Trident, for example, then over the next 35 years, that's £100 billion that we don't have to spend on Trident. I would like to see that money spent on the health service and on education in particular, mm. better childcare, protecting the vulnerable. There are so many things we could do with that money other well, than spend it on nuclear weapons. Let's look at your uncompromising commitment to scrapping Trident, the nuclear programme, um, as you're pretty much out on a limb with this among the other major parties. You've drawn a red line with this with Labour. How deep is this red line? We, we will never vote for the renewal of Trident. I mean, that's the decision that will fall to be made in the next Westminster Parliament. We'll mm. never vote for that. But in terms of what kind of deal you might make with well, a potential Labour government, would that still be I, a red I've, line I've for any said deal? We, we're unlikely to go into a coalition, a formal coalition with mm. Labour. It's more likely to be you know, an arrangement where we would support Labour on an issue by issue basis. And on that arrangement, there would be many things we could agree on that we would support, but we would not vote. For Trident. So you could still have a form of deal within Labour Party that wouldn't agree to we, scrap Trident. But we would not, in any vote, support the renewal of Trident. And you know, I can't make that any clearer than I've already made it. OK. The next question is from a couple of chaps who are close to your musical heart, um, the Proclaimers. Ah. What are the powers you'd like to see transferred to Holyrood now to alleviate the worst of the cuts on the poor of Scotland? Does the other one get to ask a question later? No, it's no. not him, sadly. Right, yeah. OK. <laughs> uh, I love the Proclaimers. Um, Which one was guys. that asking the question? Uh, I didn't. I couldn't see properly. They're so alike. I think it was. I think it was Craig, but I might have got that wrong. Um, what powers would I? I mean, obviously, I want as much power as possible to lie in the Scottish Parliament. In terms of the specifics of the question, powers to alleviate some of the damage that's been done through cuts. Well, that has to be powers over the social security system. Um, the powers that are proposed to come to the Scottish Parliament are around disability benefits uh, and principally, and that's a good thing, mm. but universal credit, um, most other benefits would stay with Westminster. I do have one final question from the novelist Irvin Welsh. Hi, I'm Irvin Welsh and this is my cat Eisenhower here in the programme. Um, I would like to ask how you feel about the, um, the Greek election results. Thank you very much. Well, for, I love Evan Welsh, she's fantastic. Um, the Greek people voted the way they did because they clearly had a strong desire f for change. And, you know, it's not for me to comment on the different choices in another country, but what I think matters now is that uh, democracy is given its place. Syriza, a bit like the SNP, has kind of surged to power mm -hmm. or prominence on this kind of wave of anti-austerity, anti-establishment populism and you're now very much part of the establishment does that make you uncomfortable i don't think having 
a, a mass movement. You've got uh, more members than the part. British yeah, Army but, has but, soldiers. But that doesn't. It's not your number of members that determine whether you're part you're of the establishment or not. Possibly going to be not. third biggest party in yeah, the United but that, Kingdom. It's, it, but it's not that that determines whether you're part of the Westminster establishment. It's your policies and your mindset and how you behave. Mm. And we will always. I guess set ourselves apart as a party because we will unashamedly and unequivocally stand up for the interests of Scotland and for the ordinary people in Scotland and make it very clear that those are our priorities. I think that's why we're successful and we take nothing for granted. I've I've learned personally and the SNP has learned collectively over the years that opinion poll ratings don't win elections. Hard work, having the best ideas, inspiring people, giving people a bit of hope and confidence and optimism that's what wins elections and I hope that's what will lead us to win lots of votes and hopefully lots of seats in the general election. Uh, just a really quick quick fire round. Oh no I hate quick fire yeah, rounds. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm useless at quick fire rounds. <laughs> Who has been Britain's best Prime Minister? Before my time but in terms of Harold Wilson maybe. I, yeah. Why? I, I don't know. I, I, it's before my time so I, I kind of base this on what I read and mm -hmm. what I've but you know I think in terms of what he tried to do and how he how he governed uh, possibly. Um, okay uh, what's the household chore you're best at? Ironing. <laughs> I iron my husband's shirts and it's possibly the only domestic thing I, I really do. What was your first paid job? I worked in a petrol station. Oh no, actually my first Saturday job was in a local radio station. My uncle did the uh, Saturday afternoon sports phone-in and I answered the phones um, for that. Uh, and then I worked in a, a local petrol station. How much cash have you got on you at the moment? Um, my bag is in another room. Uh, I don't know, actually, probably about a tenner or something. <laughs> night out or night in? Night in, definitely, all the time. King Charles <laughs> or King William? Um, oh, that's, that's very difficult. Um, King, did you see a prince? Who would well, you rather have on the throne? Well, I think, you know, King uh, Prince Charles is next in line for the throne, so I think I'll stick with that. Okay. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you very thank much you very indeed. Much. <laughs> We've got an economy that isn't delivering for the common good. We've got a social crisis where one in five workers is on less than a living wage, where so many people are struggling to keep food on the table, keep a roof over their head. And yet we are currently in Britain collectively using the resources of three planets every year, but we've only got one planet.